And you know, you just got to suck it up. They crack the door, time to go to the yard, you got to go to the yard, you know. Just got to be on your point. I know I, uh, when they made San Quentin a level two, like California, got level four is max, level one's minimum, right? So they made San Quentin a level two, a secure level two. They sent all the level fours out of there and they sent us to uh, New Folsom, you know. And that, it's a small yard. They got a track that goes around there. So we go out and drive iron and then walk the track, right? And uh, I remember these three Mexican cats were walking in front of us. And uh, this guy, my homeboy, goes, hey, check this out. Because he knew what was happening. So we're watching them behind as we walk, you know? And uh, so they walk down by the handball courts. Dudes are playing handball. They hit the handball like, like they fucked up. Ball rolls out onto the track. This dude bends over to grab the ball, and they just start whacking him. You know, it was all that's how they would orchestrate shit. It's a dirty game, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I worked the construction crew in Donovan, and uh, after they had locked all them gang members up, we went to the. You know, they took the cigarettes away, so we go out on the yard. We got a cement truck on the yard. Comes in from the outside. We're putting signs up. There are no smoking signs, you know? And uh, this dude, Evan, there was another yard that I didn't live on. We're just over there working. But there was a Mexican cat telling him that he was hooked up, right? Like, he's one of the big homies. And he was taxing dudes. Like, yeah, I got that coming because he's a big homie, right? So uh, they found out he wasn't. So uh, he was walking the track. Same thing. Homeboy goes, hey, check it out. And uh, they had stabbed him in the neck. And uh, I guess he severed his spinal cord in the neck. Dude just dropped. And we watched. The guy laid there for like 15 minutes, man, on the track. And finally someone told the cop, hey, dude's laying over there, you know. But, uh, yeah, I think he died. But the cement, I remember that because the cement truck was on the yard. That cost money, right? That cement's mixing around in the mixer. We're like, hey, we got to do that. <laughs> We got to do this job, right? It's just another day. Another day, man. Yeah. That's Prison's unbelievable, cold, man. man. That's crazy. I mean, uh, Prison's would, cold place. would you say, well, you, since so you're talking about San Quentin, wasn't there, or was it Pelican Bay, man? I think it was, I think it was Pelican Bay. They had a major riot, man. One of the biggest in history. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Was it Pelican Bay? I've heard about it. You know, I heard, yeah, I've I seen video of it. Well, you know, you got to figure like when I like San Quentin is an old prison. It was built, they opened in 1852, Folsom's old, uh, DVI, you know, Tracy's old, Soledad. So you can get, there's a lot of blind spots. There's a lot of wiggle room, right? So you can get pieces in there like, you know, steel. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some knives that blow your mind. I made some knives that blow your mind. I've seen i seen dudes making pieces in the carpenter shop when dude wasn't there with sparks flying off a grinding wheel, 10 feet, just grinding it, you know? Holy oh, shit. shit. But now, in new prisons, uh, I remember this cop in the 80s, he goes, hey, look, man, they're going to build a bunch of prisons in California that only hold 500 dudes in each prison so they can control them. But that's kind of what they did. They built new prison they have four yards that were supposed to have 500 dudes on each yard you know so it's they just got so much control now that it's hard to get steel like that now you know yeah. unless the dude's willing to cut a piece off his bunk or his locker it's hard to get a piece of steel like that now you know so guys started cutting dudes with razor blades and all that shit I, and i was like Man, the dudes have been around, you know, since the early 80s. You're like, man, what kind of shit is that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Would you say, so you would say that it's probably getting safer in the prison system now than compared to when you first went in? Uh, you know, like when they locked up all the prison gang members and they locked up, it got, I wouldn't say safer, but it wasn't as deadly for a while. Now they let all them dudes out of the hole. It's back, you know, killing times back on, you know. Uh, I mean, it just, it was a, it's a whole different deal, man. It's like guys think they want to run shit, telling guys how to live. And, you know, back in the day when I went in, 
nobody told you what to do. Right? You know, you just knew. Like if something's on, you go deal with it, right? Now it's like you got to do this, you got to do that. You can't wear your shower shoes in the day room. You can't do this, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? Uh, I ain't down for guys telling me how I got to live, you know? Because I know how I got to di- live. I know what I got to do. Uh, it's a whole different scene, man. I remember like when I was in level two uh, at CMC West, these guys are coming around saying, hey, we're taking donations, man, to pay this. Some cat owed some money, right? And I've been hearing his name, he owed money, he owed money. And uh, so these white dudes are coming around like, "Take, hey, you want to kick down to help pay this guy's debt? I said, look, man, if you guys go stab that motherfucker, I'll pay his whole debt. <laughs> and they go, man, you're, you're, you know, they were just like, what the fuck? Because if a white dude owes money now, that's how it is now. Uh, if a white dude owes a lot of money, them dudes get pissed off another race. They want to jump on all the white dudes over this dude. Or if there's two or three guys owe a bunch of money, it's like, hey, the white dudes ain't keeping their people in check. They jump on all the white dudes, you know? Yeah, I've heard yeah. I've heard. Uh, that's how they roll. Uh, they, they all try to find a way to pay the debt off, and then that guy probably gets handled or whatever. But Yeah, but see, that- I'm not paying some dope fiend's debt that it wants to shoot dope and not pay his shit. When I went to the pen... Uh, be like, hey, so and so owes money. He ain't paying. He isn't paid, right? Uh, or man, I would like, I wouldn't even hear it because you know, unless it's one of my partners. And I didn't fuck with dudes that didn't pay their debts. Most of the dudes I fucked with had their own shit, you know. But I'd be like, hey, why'd they whack that dude? Oh, he owed money. It was business. It wasn't like if a, if a especially like if a Mexican dude hit a white dude or whatever. I mean, it was like business. It wasn't a race thing. If you owe money and you don't pay, you're going to get whacked. Yeah. That's how it is. And when the prison gang dudes all got slammed, all them dudes got slammed, it kind of went to, uh, they were two on one guys. So like, which I thought was uh, chicken shit. Like if, if they don't want you on the yard, just send a couple dudes after you and jump on you in front of the fucking cops and beat him down, and then that dude gets removed off the yard. That's how it went to you. It went from killing dudes to that kind of shit. So yeah. now all them dudes are out of the hole. I think it's it's gone back to, uh, you know, you're going to be dealt with proper, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's crazy, man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a bunch of madness. You've seen your share of craziness, man. I can only imagine. Uh, it sounds like a lot more than what I've seen, you know, and I felt like prison was pretty rough for myself as well. So I can only imagine, man, you know, but I do like to end my videos on a positive note. And I, I, I do want to have you back on for a part two. Uh, but is it, was there, out of all that craziness, man, was there any kind of positive stuff that you might have done in the penitentiary? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta remember though, like all that madness that was going on separate from, especially early days. Guys are going to college, guys are going to hobby, guys are doing shit. It's just like occasionally something would happen, and just you know, they would just deal with that and continue on with the rest of the day. You know, uh, yeah, I got involved with art. You know, like I've been tattooing my whole life, and uh, I went from tattooing to drawn to painting, you know. Uh, I remember sitting in the day room in Donovan watching this cat dad, this Mexican cat paint. He used to paint in the day room. And uh, I used to watch him, you know, ask him questions. And uh, he was cool. He was an older cat, you know. And uh, he was just an awesome artist. So uh, he started giving me paint, you know, and a brush. He gave, first he gave me a red, blue, yellow, and white paint and a brush and a piece of canvas. He was like, go practice on that. So uh, I painted this owl, you know, bird. And uh, he was like, dude, that's amazing. And then he just started pumping me with paint and brushes and shit to do. And I started ordering paint. And I just started painting, you know. I was around 93. And uh, so I've been doing painting since ever since then. Uh, and then when I was in Lancaster, it was a level four yard. There was shit jumping off. There was a few riots. I mean, it was pretty ugly. Uh, 
But in the meantime, you know, I'm going to my going to the art room, doing paintings, and then I kind of open it up for guys to come in. Uh, we would have a, an art instructor come in from the street for a few weeks, teach class, and then the guys who went through that class when that was over, I would have them come in and continue learning. You know, and I'd teach guys how to paint. Uh, you know, then we'd send the paintings out to the street once a year and have a sale. You know, like an auction. And then uh, all the money would go to the children's center of Allen Valley, you know, help abuse children and their mothers. Yeah, I just got in. My thing was like, I stay focused. Like I said, I told my old lady, you know, I said, look, man, if I never get out, I'm here. I'm here, right? Because for a long time, man, they said, hey, if you got a life term, you ain't getting out. Gray Davis, the governor, said in the LA Times, if you got a life sentence, you're going to parole in a pine box. So. My thing was for years, hey, I'm never going to get out. But while I'm in here, I'm not going to be a miserable fuck, right? I'm going to do some shit, do some positive shit, try to get back to society, right? Or even to the dudes that were in prison with me. Uh, so guys that would come to the art room, I would give them like four or five panels and take their pad with some paint and shit so they could do stuff for themselves. And then they would donate paintings to the program. It turned into a pretty good thing, man. Uh, I remember my boss, I go, Hey, what's our budget, you know, for art supplies. And she was like, uh, you know, 1600 bucks. I was like, all right. Then we had our first art sale. And it was basically all my shit. You know, mm. we made five grand and she came in, she was all excited. She goes, man, we've never even made two grand. So when the next budget came around, I go, Hey, what's our budget this year? She goes, you got $8,000, man. Spend it all, you know? Yeah. I, you know, I developed some trust with her and, uh, which is cool. You know, shit like that makes you feel good. You know, when people trust you, you know? Hell uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah. It almost makes you feel like you're not really in prison so much, you know, yeah. uh, it makes yeah. you feel like you're a normal citizen. And I know exactly how you feel about that. Uh, well, that's cool. You got a lot of positivity coming out of there as well at times uh i mean do they still allow people to uh paint and get paints and all that stuff now to this day uh some prisons do some prisons don't you know i went to prison at hobby shops like i took milling cabinet so i got into woodworking and then you could go to the hobby shop they had all the machinery you had to buy your own wood buy your own glue all that shit you could make stuff and they would have a store out front where you could sell it. And then uh, the state would take 10% for the inmate welfare fund, they called it. But uh, they shut all that down. They took all the hobby shops away. They went to sell hobby. And then now a lot of places don't even have that. But, uh, yeah. Did you happen to ever uh, come across anyone that might have been popular? Uh, you know, what was his name? He was locked up. Uh out there uh damn what was his name the guy uh that kind of had like the cult going on what was his name uh uh he had like he had a oh, swatsy charlie. who yeah, yeah charlie, charlie manson yeah manson yeah, i got i met charlie manson. oh man how was that tell me that man uh you really want to know yeah man i do right, my celly my celly played music and he worked as a clerk his name's rags he passed away eddie rags deal but he worked as a clerk, right, down in the nut ward. Mm -hmm. And Charlie was part of that program. So Charlie would bring cassette tapes in. He would say what he wanted to say under the cassette tape and Rags would type it into a letter, give him the letter to mail and keep the tape. Then he started bringing Charlie over. You're not allowed to have tape recorders, but he had one. So he would bring him into the cell, play music, get Charlie to play music ask him questions and all that. So you record all this stuff. Like, what are you going to do with that, man? All them tapes. He goes, and he'd send them home. And uh, he goes, when I get out, I'm going to make a digital CD out of it, you know? But uh, Eddie Rags, he got out and drowned in a, in a fishing accident. <laughs> but uh, that never <laughs> happened. But Charlie would come over there and he goes, man, some dude threw some uh, – paint thinner or something in Charlie's face and lit him on fire. So originally he had an X in his X and then he did a backward swastika, right? Well, that was gone when the dude burned him. So Charlie told me, hey man, I want you to redo that thing on my forehead. 
You did it there. I'm like, yeah, all right. So one time I was tattooing on this guy, Gypsy, and uh, I see Charlie walk by. I go, hey, and I call his name. He came in the cell. I go, give me some fucking weed. So he pulled his shoe off, pulled a little weed sack out, put some weed on the locker. And I had it. I go, squat down here. I just, wow. I carved that swastika back into his forehead. And uh, I wiped it off. I got to put your bandana on. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. Man. Look, and, man. Uh, I did I that. Sw- I swear to God. <laughs> I don't know how the hell you ended up on my channel, but this is probably the most entertaining one out of all. Yeah, you did, yeah, did we that. did the swastika on Charlie's yeah. forehead. Yeah, I got witnesses. That's <laughs> crazy, man. That's, that's crazy. Well, look, you know what? We're gonna end it there, man. We'll end it on a high note. That was a good one. Uh, I definitely got to have you on for a part two here soon, man. Uh, Go ahead yeah. and tell the people the name of your business and exactly what you do with it, man. Really quick. Well, uh, my business is uh, hardintentions.com, right? I got T-shirts, one of my shirts. And uh, I get prints of my artwork on there and my paintings. Uh, and I got shirts. I'm getting some hats and hoodies today. Uh, you know, Hard Intentions. Uh, the name Hard Intentions, I used to do – you know, my thing was I seen them dudes from Affliction and Tap Out. You know, they sold their T-shirt company for like three million bucks to UFC. And uh, I seen Jesse James from West Coast Choppers. I had his catalog. It said that he sold his clothing line to Walmart for 200 million bucks. I was like, fuck, there's money in this shit, right? <laughs> well, I painted All my designs are hand painted, you know. I painted them on paper, sent them out. I said, man, if I get out, I want to start a T-shirt company. So that's what I did, you know. Uh, but the thing is, is cop, I used to do one with animals, you know, like elephants and shit, and I put endangered, you know. So this cop goes, hey, man, are you going to start that T-shirt line? I said, uh, I'm thinking about it. Why? He says, oh, I was thinking about doing it. I go, endangered? He goes, yeah. I go, you're going to steal my idea? And he kind of laughs. He goes, yeah, I was thinking about it. And then he goes, uh, but really, I was thinking about starting one. And this dude was into fighting, you know, boxing, UFC, all that shit. I go, so what? He goes, you know, hard intentions, you know, like fighting. I go, all right. So what I did was I stole his his ah, idea. That's <laughs> excellent. Because I think friend. it's cool, you know. My the thing is like, whatever you do in life, do it hard, man. Like I'm like this, right? Like I'm not into drugs. I'm not into none of that shit because like, if you're in that shit. You got to, whatever I do, I do it all the way, right? So if I'm in that shit, I'm going all the way and I'm going back to prison. And I'm, I ain't down with that. I'm down with my family, my motorcycle shit, my art. I do that all the way, right? So if you're going to go to church, you're going to pray to God, pray hard, do it hard. You're going to ride bikes, ride hard. You're going to fight, fight hard. You're going to work, work hard, right? Amen. Whatever yeah, it is, yeah. do it hard. I know that's right. That's a model behind it, you know? Yeah. Uh, tell me this, man. How was uh, – one more question before we leave. And I'm going to pin your website and all that to the comment section and description of the video for people to uh, check out if they would like to. Uh, yeah. How was it for you get back on a motorcycle, man, after all that time? It was kind of scary. <laughs> I was cool. I loved it, right? But – uh. You know, I was in Los Angeles. I got sideswiped by some chick. And then uh, up here recently, I got in a little accident, broke my arm. Damn. Uh, yeah. But I, I love it. I just painted my motorcycle. Uh, I dig it. At first, it was a little spooky, you know, because Los Angeles, man, it's, it's, it's wild. People drive like animals down there. And the highways, man, are... A lot of them are cement. They got big old cracks in the road to just grab your front wheel and yank you around. <laughs> yeah. Did, you know, live to ride, you know? I know that's right, man. Well, uh, I look, man, I appreciate you coming on to the show. It's been my pleasure for sure. Uh, I think it's kind of cool you got this, this going on, you know, interviewing people. I've seen some cat. You know, I watched the interview you did with a guy from California the other day. And uh, he said something fetter or something. He's got his own YouTube thing. Yeah. Uh, 
that's cool. You know, you give guys a way to speak about what's going on in there. And, you know, it's prison's rough, man. And, yeah. uh, but you know, you can make some positive shit happen out of it. For sure, know? man. And you know, my whole thing that I'm doing here is I just want people to know what the hell a little bit of what to expect in each state. Cause you know, it's very different from yeah. one state to another. I mean, it's different, let alone from one prison to another in the same state sometimes. So, uh, and you know, of course, people love hearing wild stories like uh, tattooing swastikas <laughs> on old Manson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, this one will live with me forever, my friend. It's been a pleasure for sure, and I hope to see you back on here again. I can guarantee. Well, you got my hookup, man. It's nice talking to you. Yeah, man. You in? Um, I know you're not too tech savvy yet, but I can almost guarantee, my friend. Uh, if you were to make a YouTube channel, uh, people would <laughs> definitely listen. Yeah, definitely think about it. Uh, talk and you know, talk to your old lady, and that's another thing I like about you. Uh, and people get mad and they're like, "Why you call your wife old lady?" I'm like, that, "I don't know. It's just what I've learned to call." You know, and you're saying it, so I'm like, "Yeah, all right, yeah, there we go. We got someone else saying it too, so that's cool, man." That's right. Uh, but yeah, man, you, you be easy out there, be safe. And, uh, I can't wait to talk to you again, man.